companies which have declared their earnings. HEG is a stock which we're talking about. The numbers came in yesterday and the graphite maker reported a profit figure of 634 crore for its March quarter while margins expanded to almost 74% this time around. Well, what were the key factors aiding the strong numbers? I think the street definitely knows and we know why the stock's been running up. It's given good returns to its shareholders. Let's chat with the management. Uh, we've got the chairman and managing director, Mr. Ravi Chinjanwala, who joins us on the phone line. Hi, Mr. Chinjanwala. Good afternoon to you and thanks a lot for joining us today on Bloomberg Quint. Congratulations once again on good set of numbers. FI18 has really been a good financial year for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, Mr. Chinjanwala, just wanted to first get a check about the pricing of uh, electrodes. Uh, uh, I was just looking at a couple of reports which suggest that the prices in this, the current quarter I'm talking about, a first quarter of FI19, the spot prices have gone up if I compare it to the last quarter. Uh, could you tell us what is the current spot uh, pricing that you're witnessing for your contracts of electrodes? You see, I cannot give you the details of the exact numbers, but uh, what I what I repeated in the morning in another channel was uh, something which came uh, in the public domain two days ago. As you know, the second largest graphite producer in the world, an American company called Graphtech, uh, they they just did an IPO uh, about about a month ago, and uh, they had their first conference call. And uh, answering this question, they, they said uh, the spot prices are anywhere in the region of seventeen to $23,000. Uh, but having said that, I'm, uh, I'm reaffirming that uh, this should not be taken as the average price for sales, but these are actually the spot prices. And uh, the background in, in, in which this company said this number, 72 23, is that uh, this company has uh, had a commercial policy changed six months ago where they've sold about two-thirds of their production for the next three to five years at a price of about ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000. So the balance 35% is going on the spot. And uh, this was their comment uh, to this, the, the, the question that you asked me about the current spot prices. And uh, so, as, as I said, uh, uh, there are uh, orders, there are spot orders which are going at these numbers. Uh, all I can say as a guidance is, our, uh, compared to our uh, last quarter, Q4 of last year hmm. prices, we, we, are, we are fully booked for the next two quarters at least. Okay. And our realization is going to go up. Okay. I'm not going to ask you, Mr. Junjunwala, to divulge your contract details here. But uh, uh, since you mentioned the current spot prices are hovering between $17,000 to $23,000 per ton, is, are your current prices also, current contracts being priced at current spot rates? If you could just give us a guidance on that. Yes. A part of our sales is in that region. Okay, because in the morning, Bloomberg Quint was also chatting with Kalyani Steel, uh, which uses electrodes, and they said their raw material prices are going a little higher. They've been trying to pass on their cost by increasing the prices, but still they've been facing some cost pressure. So do you think going into FI19 now, the trend that one has seen last year for the electrode prices, and which is the primary reason that your numbers have been looking so good in all the quarters of, uh, most of the quarters of FI18, will that trend continue, the margins that you've been posting, will you be able to sustain that? You see, as I said, for the next two quarters, we are 100% uh, sold. We have uh, contracts for the next six months, and uh, this is for 100% of our sales. And uh, I am telling you that, yes, our uh, margins will not only be maintained, it will be better in the next two quarters. And going into the second half, the third and the fourth quarter, uh, going by the current demand and the current trend, we, we don't see any, anything going back on the prices. I mean, uh, if, not, if, if these prices are not going to go up in the third or fourth compared to the first and second, I would be very surprised. Okay, so what you're suggesting is you expect the prices to at least remain stable or inch higher from current levels, which would also mean that your realizations are going to look only better in the coming quarters. In light of all that, Mr. Chunjunwala, if you could tell us, how do you plan to use the cash that you're generating? Will you look to augment capacity since there is so much demand that is there in the market? 
You see, obviously, adding more capacity in our core business of uh, graphite electrodes is, is the best thing to do. But, uh, but as you know, there is a huge shortage of electrodes. Uh, uh, if I give you our capacity utilization for the whole year 1718, this was about 80 percent, and uh, for the fourth quarter alone, it was for 84 percent. So quarter on quarter, our capacity utilization is increasing. And as we speak, in the last three, four months, we have done some debottlenecking of the capacities at the plant. And current year, for the whole of 1819, we believe that uh, it will be, it'll be in the high 80s. It may not be in the 90s, but it will certainly be in the high 80s, so, so which is going to be about 7, 8, 9% higher than 80% which we achieved. So, so, so which means that, uh, uh, let's say we have a 10% extra production, so that volume, uh, volume growth is going to take place. And, uh, and, and as I said, uh, we, we are quite, uh, quite hopeful that we will be able to maintain the, the kind of margins that we are talking about, despite uh, an expected increase in the, in the needle coke cost, which is our major raw material. So what I'm saying is for the next two quarters, we, we, are, uh, we are certain about our uh, sales prices, which are going to be higher than Q4. We are certain about all our costs because all the needle coke and other costs are already fixed for the next two quarters. Uh, so for three and four, I'm, I'm expecting that whatever needle co cost increase takes place, we should be able to pass it on to the market because the market is, is, uh, continues to be strong. Um, Mr. Jinjinwala, a couple of questions and of course congrats on a very good quarter and a very good year as well. Um, you know, all through the last few times that we've interacted, the story has been about the world not, not seeing additional capacity creation and which is why uh, companies like you and Graphite uh, have been able to do so well. Uh, what stops the capacity utilization levels from nudging the 90-95% mark? I mean, is there a business limitation that doesn't allow capacity utilization level to go above the 90 mark? Because I heard your answer, you mentioned that it will still go up 7-8%, but will still stay sub-90%. You see, uh the, the business is not an issue. There is no issue in producing 96, 97, 98 uh, percent. There is a market for that. But uh, the problem is this uh, major raw material that we need, which is uh, needle coke, which is a technologically oriented product. Uh, there are only three players in the world who have the technology, and uh, that quantity is limited. So this 80 or 85 or 90 percent that we are now talking about going forward this is not the case only with us. It, it is the case with all the other graphite manufacturers, sure. except uh, this American company that we were talking about a minute ago. Graftec. Who, Graftec. They have a capacity of about 170, 75,000 tons of electrodes, and they are the only ones in the graphite business who have a captive needle coke plant of 150,000 tons. Got it. So to the extent of about 90% of uh, their own requirement of coke, they have uh, the needle coke plant, they have the technology to produce that needle coke. Sure. But when we come to the, when we come to the market, the open market uh, players in the needle coke, there are only three of them. And there is a, there is a shortage of needle coke, and uh, we are only hoping that uh, the, the largest one out of the three who controls about two thirds of the needle coke market? Uh, this huge refinery, this huge oil company from America called uh, Conoco Phillips, they are debottlenecking uh, needle coke capacity, which should be on the ground by right. fourth quarter of this year in uh, uh, October, December quarter, and that that is likely to be adding about forty to fifty thousand tons of uh, needle coke on an annual basis. So okay. on that basis, we are assuming that our capacity utilization will 
at least go up by 7, 8, 9 percent in the next 12 months. Got it. Mr. Junjunwala, your bases are obviously a lot higher than what they were two years ago. You obviously can't grow 5x uh, uh, the revenue performance that you gave in the quarter or for the year. The revenues were up about 227 percent. But a ballpark estimate, just looking at the fact that one year capacity utilization levels move up, prices at least sustain, if not inch up higher. Any ballpark estimate of uh, What's the kind of growth that you can show on such high bases? You see, on, uh, on, the, on the revenue side, if I take into account uh, a production level of uh, high 80s, and if I consider the first, uh, the first half order book at a particular price, and as I said, we don't expect these prices to come down. I mean, in, I only expect that the second half uh, prices will s still be higher than the first half. Mm. Uh, so, given that uh, estimates and the and the projection that we have, uh, the uh, the turnover should be. Uh, I mean, I would uh, I would uh, I would give you a conservative number. It will be at least two and a half times of what it is now. Uh, uh, so you mean FI18? And I mean, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I don't want exact numbers, but two seven five zero crores was the FI18 revenue. You, right. you believe that the turnover could be two, two and a half times that number? Yeah, at least uh, at least six, six and a half thousand crores. Wow. And and percolating down on a higher EBITDA margin, which I presume will also be the case, uh, the, the, the bottom line numbers also, to my mind, will look very robust, much more robust than what they are currently. I mean that's what uh, that that's what it mathematically boils down to. Only we are only the the major assumption here is the needle coke availability, and the major assumption is the the needle coke cost, which is now going to go up in the next six months. Uh, we have some estimates of what that could be. So uh, as, uh, on these two assumptions. Uh, what you're saying is right. I have one last question, Mr. Junjunwala. Uh, you, were, you expressed hope that uh, the U.S. Uh, ConocoPhillips might be able to de-bottleneck and supply higher needle coke maybe at the end of quarter four or end of quarter three of the current financial year or the current calendar year as the case may be. That's right. Were that to happen, would companies like you, and I know you can speak only for yourself, but since there are only two or three players and two of them are in India, would companies like you and Graphite look to expand capacity? Is the cycle looking so strong that even this late into the cycle, and I'm using these terms carefully, uh, it may not be too late, but even this uh, much into the cycle, you will look to expand capacities meaningfully if the raw material availability becomes known? No, absolutely. I mean, uh, to give you a background, we, we have one single plant of about 80,000 tons, which makes it uh, the single largest plant in the world under one roof. And as we speak, we are already in the market collecting all the quotations. We, we know what equipments to buy from which supplier, from which country. We have the space in the current plant near Bhopal to go to about 100,000 tons. But as I said, uh, we should be ready with uh, uh, what you call a detailed project report kind of a thing in the next uh, three months or so. Uh, but again, uh, unless we go to at least 90, 95% production on the current 80,000 tons, it's not going to be very practical to take a view to go to 100,000 tons. I mean, first of all, we must go to about 90, 95% in the current year and then we, so we want to be ready in the next three, four months on the assumption that this needle coke situation should improve with this de-bottlenecking. And then by that time, by September, October, we should be ready at least uh, where we, if we do decide to take the next step to go to 100,000 tons. So we don't have to spend another four or five months to, 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 to do whatever we need to do. So that, that process is already on. So as soon as we take a decision to go to 100,000 tons, we should be ready to start implementing it pretty quickly at that stage. Hmm. Mr. Chinjunwala, we hope you touch the 95% mark with regard to capacity utilization in FI19. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. and all the best for FI19. Thank you. Thanks a lot.